Good afternoon, Grantham graduates, parents, spouses, family members, members of the faculty and staff of Grantham, and honored guests. And today our honored guests include Mr. Tom Makem, who serves as our chairman of the board of directors and other members of the board. I'd like to take it as time to welcome you to the 2020 Grantham University Virtual Commencement Ceremony. I am Thomas Rame. I serve as Chairman of the Board of Governors of Grantham, and it is my honor to welcome you to this ceremony today. I have been fortunate to serve on the Board of Governors for several years, and I can tell you on behalf of the Grantham family our board of governors, our board of directors, our faculty and staff. This is without any doubt our very favorite time of the year, and that is the time in which you graduate from Grantham. It also shows you how important commencement is to Grantham, using its initiative, its creativity, and it is an adaptiveness that is bringing forward this commencement on schedule virtually. In my humble opinion, there is no greater accomplishment for an individual than to pursue an education and graduate from a credible university. It sets up a great deal of success for you individually. It also lets you begin a new start in your life. I believe that it will make you better able to contribute to America and I also believe that it will go a long way to ensuring the success and care of your family and the family members with you. It has been our pleasure here at Grantham to have been able to walk with you as you have pursued your degree and as you have completed the requirements to graduate. On behalf of the Grantham family, please accept our heartfelt thanks for selecting Grantham for your educational pursuit of a degree. Also accept individually our sincere congratulations on your accomplishments. Now we have a wonderful presentation in store for you, and I'm quite sure that you're anxious to get started. At this time, normally, I would ask you to take out your cell phones, put it in a silent mode so it won't disturb the commencement ceremony. Today, I would ask you to take out your cell phone using the social media platforms and hashtags. Please ensure that it is used to distribute and allow you to participate in this ceremony today. We want you to be a part of this celebration. I'd like to begin our ceremony in the best way that I can think of possibly, and that is by giving thanks. Please allow me to introduce Ms. Tina Freestone. She is Grantham University's Associate Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences. She will deliver our invocation. Again, thank you from me and members of the faculty and staff. At this time, I will turn it over to Ms. Tina Freestone. Good afternoon and welcome. We gather here today understanding that we come from different places and cherish different beliefs. It is within this diversity that we stand united in gratitude for this commencement. I now invite you to reflect quietly, expressing thanks for our many blessings and accomplishments. Creator, we are grateful for the graduates gathered here. Give them the grace to make a difference for good wherever they may find themselves in the years ahead. For all who pursue education, grant not only the knowledge they need in their chosen fields, but also the wisdom to apply that knowledge. For those in military service and our first responders, we are grateful for their protection of our freedoms. May they serve our country, communities, and all of humanity with integrity and honor. For all of the faculty, staff, and families who work tirelessly supporting our graduates, 
May they be a blessing to those whose lives they personally touch. Remember, graduates, your graduation symbolizes your role in a dynamic partnership with Grantham University. You and Grantham are forever connected through our collective commitment to create a better tomorrow because of the education we celebrate today. From this pivotal point onward, go forth with gratitude, humility, and unbounding strength to make your impact as an individual. Now, I ask all graduates and guests to stand for the presentation of the colors by Olathe Police, Kansas Police Department, which will be followed by the singing of our national anthem. As we gather here virtually, the impact of these unprecedented times cannot be avoided. And here to help us acknowledge some special portions of our graduating class is Rear Admiral, retired Dr. Carol Romano, a member of the Grantham Board of Governors, as well as Professor and Dean of the Daniel K. Inoue Graduate School of Nursing at the Uniformed Services University of the Health Sciences in Bethesda, Maryland. Dr. Romano holds her PhD in nursing and is board certified in nursing informatics and nursing administration. She has been working in important roles in nursing leadership for over 40 years. I'm humbled to be part of this virtual commencement ceremony to honor you graduates of Grantham University. I wish I were with you all in person to congratulate you on achieving your degree. As Dr. Petrai mentioned, we are living in unprecedented times times that are challenging and maybe even confusing and scary. But heroes do live among us. Heroes who are there to put the needs and the safety of others before their own. Today, I wanna to honor the Grantham University heroes for the sacrifices they make to help us all, not only during these challenging times, but every day. The heroes who dare to care are our first responders and frontline workers. On behalf of the university, I extend a huge thank you to every graduate who has served their community as a first responder, whether as a member of law enforcement, a firefighter, or an EMT. We also want to recognize and thank family members, members who have supported our first responders in their academic journey, while at the same time they were protecting our communities. We owe you all a debt of gratitude for your service and your sacrifice. Next, understandably as a nurse, I have a special place in my heart for all the nurses and healthcare workers. They spend countless hours in potentially dangerous conditions to help those who are sick and suffering. In times like these, we especially appreciate the dedication and sacrifice it takes to heal not just individuals, but entire communities. To those of you graduating today who serve in the hospitals, the clinics, and on the front lines of this pandemic, I thank you on behalf of everyone at Grantham University. We are proud of your dedication to heal and to help others while still finding the time to achieve your academic goals. You represent this university in your communities. You are changing lives and you are making a difference. You are our heroes. 
It is a privilege for me to share this graduation with you and to honor your service and your achievements. And now, graduates and guests, Grantham University President, Dr. Anthony Petroy. I am Dr. Anthony R. Petroy, Grantham University's President, Provost, and Chief Academic Officer. Like so much of 2020, today's ceremony is historic. For the first time, our graduation ceremony is 100% online, just like our classes. Tradition has been reimagined to adapt to the times. We've seen lots of change in recent months, haven't we? People everywhere are having to try things in new ways, which has created some opportunities. As an example, this virtual graduation has created the opportunity for every graduate and guest to have the best seat in the house. But more importantly, thanks to this virtual format, more of you are able to fully participate in your graduation. We have more than 600 graduates celebrating with us today. This is a record number, three times more than any past graduation as a direct result of your ability to attend virtually. Again, like our classes, this year's virtual commencement is easily accessible and more convenient. A new normal is emerging, shaped from the response to challenges we've encountered recently and learning from that process. Those defining the new normal are ingenious and forward thinking. They are problem solvers and innovators. The powerful blend of perseverance, optimism, courage, passion, and resilience needed to succeed in today's ever-changing landscape is known as grit and it's one of the most highly valued traits in today's world. People with grit are rising to the top as architects of the new normal. When you chose to pursue higher education, you demonstrated that you have grit. You reimagined your future and believed you could achieve this monumental goal. For many of you, fitting education into your busy lives was a challenge, a challenge that would cause many people to give up but not you, because you have grit. When I hear of perseverance, optimism, and resilience to achieve a goal, I think of Thomas Edison. We all know Thomas Edison as the inventor of the light bulb, but he is also famously known for saying that during the process of developing the light bulb, he came up with a thousand ways to not create a light bulb. His message was, not only is it okay to fail, but make sure to push through those failures and learn from them and keep going until you achieve your goal. So even though you may have stumbled or struggled along the way during your educational journey, you persevered and you made it here to celebrate achieving your goal with us today. Today, you are celebrating with classmates from all 50 states and five countries who represent all ethnicities and stages of life in a broad spectrum of experiences. While most of you are in your 30s and 40s, your class stretches from 19 to 79 years of age. Many of you are public servants. Today, we recognize our graduates who are first responders, including medical, law enforcement, and other civil professionals serving your communities on the front lines while completing your degrees. Many of you, like me, have military affiliations, you and your families represent all branches of the military, including Army, Navy, Air Force, the Marine Corps, and the National Guard. I offer a heartfelt thanks to those of you who are serving your country, regardless of which country and communities. Many of you are the first in your families to earn a college education. Others of you are working on or have completed multiple degrees. More than 200 of you are graduating with honors by earning a grade point average of 3.5 or higher for our undergraduate students and a 3.67 grade point average for graduate students. We recognize and congratulate you for your dedication and hard work. You all looked beyond traditional schools for a solution to fit your life. Despite juggling busy schedules full of many responsibilities, you persevered. And today, I am so proud of you, and you should be proud of yourself, because you reached your goal. And what gave you the drive? 
How did you do this? Determination, perseverance, grit. You optimistically reimagined your future. You problem solved by seeking a non-traditional solution like online education that would fit your life. Your perseverance drove you to the finish line. This reminds me of the story of Ida Keeling. She's 105 years old and she's a runner. I'm sure you've seen her on TV or the internet somewhere before. She started running at the age of 67 to cope with the loss of two of her sons in a very short time. She has run races of all sorts of lengths, from 100 meters to 5K and more. She even holds the world record for the 100 meter dash for women over 100 years old and won an honorary ESPN ESPY award in 2018 at the age of 103. At 105, she said that even though it may take her longer than most other people, if she starts a race, she finishes the race. She has also said, don't feel like you're too old, just keep going, do what you can do, and before you know it, you will reach your goals and you'll feel great about yourself at the end. Two things I think we can all learn from Ida Keeling. One, it doesn't matter when you start something as long as you have the passion and determination to do it. And two, it doesn't matter how far or how long it takes you to complete the journey as long as you finish. Most of you follow the non-traditional student path and it may have taken you longer to finish than you originally planned. But here you are, at the end of your journey, you finished. Your world may be vastly different than when it was when you started working on your degree. Perhaps your employment has changed. Or because of COVID-19, you unexpectedly had to manage your kids' education in addition to your own. Maybe you started a degree with a particular goal in sight, but now that goal has shifted. I'm excited to see what you do and see your contributions as you go out to join the architects of the new normal. Your education has equipped you with skills and knowledge and combined with your experience and proven grit makes you capable, effective, and agile to be the architects of the ever-changing framework of tomorrow. Class of 2020, I could not be prouder of you. The world's new normal needs you right now. As you move forward into this world, remember the challenges you've overcome, the creative solutions you've found to move forward, and be confident that your grit will carry you successfully through tomorrow, no matter what curveballs are thrown your way. Speaking of curveballs, today's keynote speaker, I'm sure, has seen and hit his share of curveballs, both in life and on the baseball field. Les Norman is originally from Warren, Michigan but moved around a bit during his childhood. He won a junior Olympic gold medal in baseball in 1987 before attending the University of St. Francis in Joliet, Illinois. He was drafted by the Kansas City Royals in the 25th round of the 1991 Major League Baseball draft. He worked hard and fought his way through the minor leagues, even earning the Royals Minor League Player of the Year award in 1993. He made his major league debut with the Royals in 1995 and eventually retired from baseball in 2000 to start a family and focus on a career in ministry and public speaking. Along with regular public and motivational speaking engagements, Les is also the host of the Breaking the Norm radio show locally on 810 AM radio. Graduates, please let me introduce to you Mr. Les Norman. Greetings Grantham University graduates, I'm Les Norman. I know this isn't exactly how you thought your graduation ceremony would go, but let's face it, you've absolutely rocked this online thing for quite a while, so you ought to be used to this by now. And although you won't be sitting right next to your fellow graduates, and you can only throw your cap as high as the ceiling in the room you're sitting in, it's still an amazing achievement, and you deserve to be honored for it however it's done. So, if that's you with your head down playing on your phone, just give me 10 virtual minutes and you're free. I mean, let's think about this just for a second. Maybe you were dealing with some limitations at some time in your life. You made the decision to further your education to better yourself and or your family. Maybe you're one of the heroes that served in our military or are currently serving. And if you are or were, that makes you a hero. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you. None of us can do what we do without you. 
Maybe you wanted to wait for your kids to get a little bit older. For some reason, during some season, you desired to make a change to better your future, and Grantham University provided you with that opportunity. Hey, change is never easy. In fact, it's difficult, and sometimes it's downright painful. But then you took the next step that would stop most people cold. You put your dream into action. You signed up for classes. You stayed up late so you could study after the kids went to bed. Maybe you worked an extra job so you could afford school and make ends meet, and so on. But you adapted to the situation because you kept your dream out in front of you. You sacrificed, gave everything you had, and today, every obstacle that whispered no to you has disappeared. Every extra moment, every doubt, every fear this day is now erased. Now you realize that nothing can stop you, except maybe a stop sign or stop light, but that's it. Nothing else can stop you. Look, I'll be honest. All I ever wanted to do was play professional baseball. Not just professional baseball, but go to the highest level, which is the major leagues. But you see, there was a problem. I was the shortest kid on the team with the least amount of talent, living on what most kids would say was the wrong side of town. At age eight, the only girl in town beat me out at my dream position, second base. So I became the starting right fielder, and she became the team's only all-star representative. From an early age, all around me were voices and situations that seemed like nothing but limitations. But I had something, and that something was passion. It fueled me. It kept me going through good days and bad, and it kept my dream alive. After a successful high school career, I'd move on to college, but I soon realized that it was more difficult than I could ever imagine. The academics, the athletes, everything about it was so intimidating. I started to see limitations in my life again. One morning during practice, it was 5.30 a.m. in this musty, dirty lobby of this National Guard armory. I was a college freshman, and I stood there wondering why my coach was tossing balls up in the air and encouraging me, yelling to me, to sprint across this hard tile floor to dive and catch them, and over and over again. I mean, how was this going to make me any better? This is way too hard, and I did not sign up for this. But it was then that I realized that no goal ever worth reaching didn't come without sacrifice and hard work. My body was capable, although I didn't feel like it at the time. It was my mind and my heart that was holding me back. In that moment, I made the decision to dive in, sometimes literally, with some bloody results, but I needed to sell out to my dream. In that moment, I heard every voice that ever told me no. I played back every opinion that said I was too small, too weak, too poor, too much of a long shot. You see, what they couldn't see was my heart. What they couldn't hear and what they could never extinguish was my yes. And what they couldn't feel was my passion. Does that sound familiar to you? I bet it does. And by the way, that day in practice when I became the starting right fielder, you know, the position that they put all the bad kids, it was the first position I would play in my first game as a major league outfielder with the Kansas City Royals. You see, sometimes change is good, even when it hurts. Sometimes it's for the better, and sometimes she's just a better right fielder than you are, right, ladies? I'm often asked how or why why I got into radio or TV. How did I become a keynote speaker? What did I go through to become an author or a life coach? And my answer is the same for every one of those questions, and I believe it's the same for you today. It's because I wanted to. Why did you receive your degree and earn a college diploma? Because you wanted to. Because it was important to you. Because you believed you could, and instead of listening to voices around you and giving in to the situations that made it seem impossible to achieve those things, you surrounded yourself with people who believed in you, and you saw the solution through the problem. But now what? Is it easy from here on out? (laughs) Not on your life. Now the real journey begins. All that faith, all that drive, all those people you've worked so hard for are still counting on you. Is it scary? You better believe it is. Making it to the big leagues was the easy part for me. Facing a seven-foot-tall left-hander who threw 100 miles per hour in a stadium with 60,000 people screaming at you to fail... That wasn't in the manual when I was 12, or even 18, or even the day I got called up to the big leagues. But that giant was there every day, waiting. The first four times I faced him, I walked up to home plate expecting failure, and that's exactly what happened. That giant represented every difficulty that my life presented. 
every naysayer, every obstacle that made me want to quit until the time I'd had enough. The fifth time I faced that giant, I won that battle. And as you go through life, you're going to face your seven foot giants. Some of them are going to throw 100 miles an hour, but you'll be ready then because you're ready now. It may not always go like you plan, but that's okay. Grab your bat and take your swings. Believe in what you've accomplished, where you've been, but most importantly, who you are. The world is absolutely waiting for someone like you. It needs someone like you, and you're more than ready to answer that call. English novelist Ian e. Forster said, One person with passion is better than 40 people merely interested. And I couldn't agree more. In this virtual room, there are passionate people everywhere. I mean, there has to be. Whether you just graduated with honors or you just barely made it, the fact remains, you made it. Why? Because you have passion. It can't be stolen, it can't be measured, and it can't be denied. And the coolest thing about your passion is that it's unique to you. So rely on it. It's what got you here. Don't let anyone ever question it. You see, the most successful people aren't always the ones that speak the loudest. The majority of those people live the loudest. So whether your voice booms like a sonic jet or whispers like a gentle breeze, live it out loud. Your legacy begins now. What will people say about you? Who will you influence? What will you invent, affect, change, improve, paint, build, create, cure, discover, solve, direct, coach, or help? Anything you want to because you possess the tools for all of it. The world isn't the same as when you started on this journey. It's not the same as it was the beginning of the past year. It's not even the same as it was yesterday. Yet look at what all you've done in spite of all of that. In a season full of fear, you've shown courage. During this time of testing, you've shown resiliency and resolve. Perhaps most importantly, during a time of anxiety and confusion, you've given many who will only dream about what you've done hope. Today, the world just got better. Be proud of what you've accomplished and for who you are. In life, we tend to believe what or who we listen to the most. If we listen to those that say can't or won't, we risk becoming a limit that someone else sets for us. Not today. Today, you broke that trend in your life. You didn't just reset a limit, you erased it, even shattered it. You earned your degree. You became a new voice. You have given hope and strength to others fighting to hear the right voices. Today, you became limitless. To the faculty and staff at Grantham University, thank you for providing this opportunity for these amazing graduates. To the family of the graduates, you're to be honored for sharing your time, being patient, and supporting your loved ones. And finally, to the amazing graduates, I say congratulations. There is nothing you can't do. So be filled with passion, keep believing in who you are, and go out there and do it. Thank you, Liz, for those inspirational and motivational words. And on behalf of Grantham University, we will be presenting this award to Les as a token of our gratitude and appreciation. Thank you, Les. Our next speaker is not only a fellow Grantham alum, he was named the 2020 Distance Education Accrediting Commission Outstanding Graduate for Grantham University. He is a Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Marine Corps and earned three degrees from Grantham all while serving his country. An associate's degree in computer science, bachelor's in multidisciplinary studies, and a master's degree in project management. He has served more than 30 years in the Marine Corps and is still on active duty today, serving as the fourth Marine Aircraft Wing Engineering Officer in New Orleans. Graduates, I introduce to you the 2020 Grantham University Outstanding Graduate, Lieutenant Colonel Craig Elliott. Good afternoon to the Grantham University staff, those family members and guests that are attending virtually, and my fellow Grantham alumni watching this commencement ceremony. Congratulations on the educational success that has brought you to this point today. I'm honored to be your 2020 alumni graduate, representing each and every one of you, your hard work, your dedication, and your perseverance in the achievement of your educational goals. Whether you're a military service member, a first responder, or a civilian, you've had to balance the challenges of an educational career with work, a family, or possibly even deployments to a foreign country. And you did this every day, week after week, year after year, in pursuit of your goals. 
Many of you have been tempted to quit or put off your studies, and some of you may have done just that, but you came back. I've known the personal satisfaction of attaining my educational goals. I've done it three times here at Grantham University. I come from a very small town in the middle of nowhere, Arizona, a town that was already declining in the 1980s and today has less than 25% of that past population. I joined the Marine Corps in 1988, not knowing what I wanted to do with my life, but knowing I needed to get away. I just graduated high school, didn't think I could afford college, and I wanted to go out and do better things. I truly felt the Marine Corps was my vehicle for those opportunities. Soon after arriving at my first duty station, I enrolled in the local community college, the tent upon obtaining my degree at some point in time. The thing about being an active duty Marine trying to attend college back in 1989 is that my job in the Marine Corps did not support my college obligations. I worked late, I worked weekends, and I started deploying a lot. The point is the studies didn't even take a back seat to my military obligations. I basically put them in a trunk and I forgot all about them. Life in the Marine Corps quickly started racing forward. And before I knew it, I had been in the military for nearly 18 years and I still hadn't even enrolled in university studies. Then I heard about Grantham University from a fellow Marine. I was on my third deployment to Iraq and Gunnery Sergeant Harrison asked me where I went to college. I responded that I hadn't because of my rapid redeployments and it looked like I wouldn't be able to do so because I was gonna keep deploying. He told me about Grantham University and later that day, after standing in line at the Al-Assad internet tent for over an hour, I used my 15 minutes of computer time to go to www.grantham.edu and I clicked on the request more info link. I started to grow a little bit antsy at the prospect of actually going back to school. And after I returned to the States, I began my first classes at Grantham University in February of 2006. And I started an educational journey that continues to this day. I still had more than my share of challenges competing for my attention. I was still a full-time Marine officer by this time. I still had a wife and two kids to take care of, and I still deployed. However, the staff, instructors, and online learning environment offered by Grantham University not only supported my goals, it eventually led to an associate's degree in computer science in 2012, a multidisciplinary bachelor's degree in 2015, and finally, my MBA in project management in 2017. I started with Grantham for the convenience of an online education I stayed with Grantham because of the people. The staff and the instructors with whom I interacted were always the utmost professionals, and they took a genuine interest in my success. I would like to give special recognition to Cammie Richardson for having been with me throughout my entire journey here at Grantham. She was one of my first student advisors, and even as she moved on to other roles, she remained one of my biggest supporters. Because of the heartfelt support and genuine concern demonstrated by you and everyone at Grantham, I'm now an online university instructor myself, hoping to bring the same positive experience to my own students each term. Thank you very much for all that you did, Cammie. I have a daughter that graduated with her bachelor's degree recently after almost four years of brick and mortar education. When COVID-19 hit, she, like hundreds of thousands of other university students, had to transition to online learning. Her opinion of online education quickly changed as she realized she no longer had access to instructors and tutors immediately following her classes. There were no office hours for drive-by subject questions, and there were no longer study groups for students to get together to discuss assignments and projects. She realized that written feedback in a discussion post doesn't carry the same impact as receiving it directly from her instructor in a class. She understood the importance of time management. Windows for learning are not the same as scheduled class hours, and ultimately, she knew the amount of effort required by students such as all of you to achieve her academic goals. I think the resident university population at large shares her newfound appreciation for online learners everywhere. Each of you are virtually here today because you've demonstrated a desire to succeed, whether it was to prepare yourself to enter the workforce, to obtain a better position at work, or for self-improvement, your efforts have finally borne fruit. No matter why you embarked upon furthering your education, no matter why you chose Grantham University, you can stand proud of your accomplishments. You can go forward from this day knowing that you've received a quality education and that you are prepared to positively impact the world around you. In closing, I want to welcome all of you to the club of Grantham University alumni. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and I hope you are all staying safe, healthy, and motivated to be a Grantham University graduate. 
God bless and Semper Fi. Thank you, Craig, for your service and your valuable words of wisdom to your fellow Grantham alumni, or at least soon to be. Now, at this time, I would like to ask retired Army Command Sergeant Major and a member of Grantham's Board of Governors, Lindsey Streeter, to present our special military recognition. As many of you are aware, Grantham University's founding father, Donald Grantham, did so upon a vision of providing best-in-class educational opportunities to ensure the success of our separating service members. In fact, a large majority of our base of students are military service members, and over 50% of our graduates today are from the military community. At this time, I would like to acknowledge from the graduating class all of our active duty, guardsmen, reservists, retirees, and our family members that are graduating as well. I'd also like to tip my hat to the many military spouses that are attaining degrees on today. Job well done to all of you. To our families, friends, and loved ones that are watching us live on today, we thank you for your overwhelming support for your graduate. We could not have realized this day without you. And to our faculty here at Grantham University, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the many seeds that you've sown in helping these people to realize their dreams of educational attainment. Job well done to you as well. And now I have a special presentation to our outstanding graduate and alumni guest speaker, Marine Lieutenant Colonel Craig Elliott. Many of you may not have heard the history of the military challenge coin. The coin traces its roots back to World War I when a US pilot was shot down over France. Feared to be a German spy, he was gathered up and quickly sentenced to be executed. He reached into his pocket and found a bronze medallion there tucked away and it had inscribed on it his unit identification. Instead of uh, being executed that, that day, his life was spared and it was celebrated with a bottle of wine. The military coin that we use today to challenge our, co our comrades traces his roots back to that very event. Craig Elliott, I'd like to present to you on behalf of Grantham University's Board of Directors, its faculty and staff, the Military Challenge Coin from Grantham University. Job well done, Colonel. Thank you, Sergeant Major. I'm both humbled and honored to receive this coin. As an active duty Marine with over 32 years of service, I've amassed quite a collection of coins, and this one will take an honored place amongst them. Thank you again. And now I turn this time back over to Dr. Bichoy. Thank you, Sergeant Major. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Nancy Miller, Dean of the College of Engineering and Computer Science, for the presentation of the Outstanding Faculty Member of the Year Award. Our faculty are an important and vital part of all that we do. We take great pride in recognizing their achievements. It is with great honor that I present our 2020 Outstanding Faculty Member of the Year Award to Stephanie K. Pust, in recognition of her continued support of our students, as well as her contributions to the College of Engineering and Computer Science and our Grantham academic community. Stephanie's goal is clear, to provide as much help to as many students as possible, even to, to include going above and beyond to help students that are not even in her classes. She takes great care in making sure that every one of her students understands the material and also making sure that every student that needs assistance gets assistance. On behalf of every student who has benefited from your support and the rest of the faculty and staff who see the benefits of your efforts every day, we thank you for all that you do, Stephanie. Thank you so much, Dr. Miller and Dr. Petroy. My focus is always on supporting our students and helping them succeed. I'm very humbled by this honor. And thank you, Stephanie. We are so honored to have such a dedicated instructor going above and beyond for our students every day. I speak on behalf of everyone at Grantham University. When I say thank you and congratulations, we are so proud of you. Now, to the reason we are all here. We are proud to present the undergraduate and graduate candidates for each of our schools. We will go in order starting with the associate and bachelor's degree candidates in each school, followed by the master's level candidates. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Cheryl Rolls to please come forward to present the candidates as 
Dean for the College of Nursing and Allied Health. Thank you, Dr. Petri. I am honored and humbled to be able to present this year's class of undergraduate and graduate candidates for the Grantham University College of Nursing and Health Professions. Seneza Adams. Paulette Andrews. Latasha Augustus. Adrian D. Baker. Judy Barger. Bernice Brown. Quanisha Brown. Sierra Jade Brown. Florence Clark. Candice Cloud. Jocelyn Couch. Gail Dick. Pamela R. Driggers. Shamika Dunlap. Kendra Garrett. Jesse George. Natasha Gordon. Charlene Green. Renee Harris. Whitney Hinton. Rhonda Hickson. Terry Hubbard. Latasha James. Nikki Johnson. Clarice Jordan. Tramice Joseph. Laurel M. Keith. Doris Sharper Lemon. Vanessa Lucas Potts. Carol Ann Macon. Corey Maddox. Michelle Meyer. Kimberly Martins. Christina McCready. Michelle McGuff. Rhonda Moore. Georgia Morales. Tina Morgan. Kathy Y. Narcisse. Allison R. Peters. Erica Pruitt. Brittany Nicole Riley. Joanne Rodriguez. Zoanne Marie Rodriguez. Kathleen Schroeder. LaDonna Sip. Sequoia Monique Smallwood. Jennifer Lakesia Smith. Desiree Stubbs. Leanne Tempesta. Sharita Thomas. Tabitha Tisdale. Von Tressa Toombs. Eileen Villanueva. Johnny Ward. 
Amanda Wilkerson. Joan Jalina Williams. Sandra Williams. Sherry Wright. Nicole Peterson. Samantha Ray Smith. Bruslin R. Davis. Karen Griffin. Victor Hickson. Veronica Jamesina Hudson. Marquel Phillips. Sunita Atikari. Tabitha Young. Lavette Baker. Carolyn J. Bates. Raina Jalyn Bittell. Janie Brown. Jeannie Castro. Tammy Marie Cox. Yolanda Denise Davis. Tanisha Dawkins. Nashan Abasso Diana. Kara Elliott. Reginald Eloy. Yvette Fowler Utanis. Portia Green Norman. Tafik Ibrahim. Samuel Eshiquine. Mayril Jacob. Jacqueline Jensen. Danielle Kuhn. Erica Monique Lewis. Taisha Liebird. Jacqueline Marshall. Shannon Darty McCutcheon. Lydia Morton. Lillian Okafor. Olayton Olasaji. Edrin Omajero. Kendall Rogers. Leslie Elaine Sanders. Shalunda Swan Robinson. Leslie Thomas. Stephanie Thomas. Ricardo Tabayan. Ainita Walker. Jade Aria Walters Nash. Shani Watson. Elena West. Amber Westfall. Kenesha Willis. Courtney Mitchell Maruyo. Tabitha Perry. Monica Miller. Molly Covington. Susan McKinley. Kelly Curley. Eva A. Davila Alcala. Congratulations to the Grantham College of Nursing and Allied Health degree recipients. I am so proud of everything you have accomplished.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Grantham President, Dr. Anthony Petroy for a special presentation. It is my honor to introduce Lieutenant Commander William Allen, United States Navy retired, who is also our Dean of the Mark Skousen School of Business and our College of Arts and Sciences for a special presentation. Thank you. At this time, I would like to take a moment to recognize a special guest attending with us today. His name is Jason Sitchi, a veteran of the United States Navy, earned his Associate of Science in Electronic and Computer Engineering Technology last year, and has worked tremendously hard to be within only 12 credits of completing his Bachelor of Science degree of Electronic Engineering Technology. Plus, he has completed all of this work with a cumulative grade point average of 3.9. He has done this all despite being diagnosed with an aggressive terminal cancer at the beginning of the year. Yet, he still persists, and he hasn't let this stop him. Because, as he put it, and I quote, I would just love for my boys to know their dad has finished his bachelor's degree. So today, because of his perseverance and grit, he has achieved the distinction of earning his full degree. It is my privilege and deepest honor to make that happen for Jason and his family today. And on behalf of the entire Grantham Board of Governors and the entire Grantham University family, I present Jason Sitchi with his Honorary Bachelor of Science of Electronic Engineering Technology degree, summa cum laude. I wish we were able to present this degree to you in person, Jason, but may God bless you and your family. You will forever be a part of the Grantham family. Now, I would like to ask Dr. Petroy to confer the degrees for the Grantham College of Nursing and Allied Health class of 2020 candidates. And now, we come to the part of the ceremony you've all been waiting for. Now, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Kansas Board of Regents, Department of Education, Distance Education Accrediting Commission, as well as the Board of Governors and Directors of Grantham University, I confer upon each of you the degree for which you have been certified by the faculty together with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. And in keeping with tradition, undergraduates, you may now move your tassel from the right to the left in recognition of your achievement. Master's graduates, we also would like to recognize your impressive accomplishment at this time. Congratulations to all on your success. Before we officially conclude today's historic ceremony, I wanted to leave you with one more thought. It's not how or when you begin, it's that you finish what you started. And no matter how many mistakes you make, or how many times you stumble along the way. Just keep moving forward, keep learning, and keep persevering until you reach your goal. Grantham has given you the tools to succeed, as well as prepared you to thrive in whatever may come in the future. Be an architect of change. Make the world better. You've proven you have the grit and determination to achieve anything you set your mind to and I am excited to see what the future holds for all of you. Remember, you are part of the Grantham family and we care about you and we want to hear from you. We want to see you reach the highest pillars of success, personally, professionally, and educationally. I want to thank you all for joining us today and making this such a special day. And I hope to see as many of you as possible back here in Kansas City next year to celebrate your graduation with us in person. Thank you, stay safe and stay well.